Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Today I'm going to be showing you a method that was taught to me by Tom Latine of inlaying wire. Thanks for watching. Okay everyone, like I normally do most of my videos, I'm going to start at the workbench here. I'm going to draw a simple piece of bar stock. This bar stock is what we're going to be working on today. And I want to show you essentially the basic process of inlaying this wire. This wire that I'm working with today is a red brass wire. You can do this with bronze, you can do this with copper, pretty much any material that is softer than the material that it's being inlaid into. So how this method works and the way it differs than the correct method of doing inlay is you are not actually removing any material. Tom Latine is very big into chasing work and doing chasing and repose work or not necessarily repose, but he does a lot of chased iron elements. And when he does these elements, um, this is just kind of his particular method. It suited him for years, and it's what he, you know, he chooses to do. And I kind of follow along the same thing, uh, because I have a lot of respect for the man. Essentially, the basis that what we are doing is, is we are going to be taking and raising up barbs off of a piece of material. And what this will look like when we get done, in order for it to catch the material, is like we have essentially made a little dovetail. This is the premise for all inlay. The proper way of inlaying, once again, is to remove this material and then undercut the sides. So undercutting the sides would be referring to removing material out from the sides of the hole that you're putting the wire in. The next step in the process of a standard inlay job, you would set your wire in there. Usually your wire sticks up just proud of the surface, and then you would hammer it down flush, and it would fill these voids. Then after some grinding and stuff, you would end up with a wire inlay. That in its that in its simplest form is wire inlay. That's what we are doing. Instead of cutting out material, which is very time consuming, we're going to do another time consuming task. And that is to raise up barbs on each side of the material to be undercut, like so. And we're going to do that with some chasing chisels. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yeah. Sorry, it's getting a little dusty on the workbench. I wish I could draw this a little better. Might have to invest in a chalkboard. Anyways, so we're going to raise up these barbs. And then what we're going to do is put our wire in there and then close down the barbs on the piece and then clean it up on the sander. And it will do the same effect. So what I'll do is I'll show this to you all again when I'm over at the workbench. But I want to try to do a little expanded view of this here. So essentially we're going to raise up a barb that's kind of cut back in here like so. It'll have a bottom. It's kind of a crowned bottom. That's just kind of the nature of things. And it's going to look like that on the top of the metal. We will fill this area with a large section of wire or the wire that is the correct gauge. And then this all gets hammered down flush which in essentially pushes the wire down into the barbs that you've cut and it traps it in amongst the steel. This is going to be our wire inlay for today. So next clip, I will be over at the vise and we'll go ahead and start inlaying this. Okay, everyone, here we are at the vise. Hopefully you all can see this very well. We're going to start with a butcher. A butcher is just simply anything that has a leading edge. We're going to start where the bank of the butcher is pushing the material towards the center of our cut. And we're going to start at one end, and we're going to create a line, and we're going to line this straight across the whole entire piece. And if you're wondering what I'm doing here, this is just a piece of mild steel. And all we're trying to do is create a flat part right here. So the one side's flat, the other side is banked. 
as you can see. So we'll do that on the other side as well. Nice and close. The wire I'm using is very, fairly thin. And we need to create a very small, thin cut here. Uh, and we'll do it again over here. Just like so. So you can see that left, that little raised bit there in the center. That's going to get flattened down somewhat when we come down and we undercut these sides. We're not going to do that with the butcher. We are going to take and do that with a very small chisel. And what that'll do is that'll prick them sides up even higher. And we're just coming in at an angle. We're going to planish that off. You don't have to get too fancy with this. Because the ideal of it here is for us to create this void. So now you can see a little bit of a texture both ways. Let's see if I can get this. I should have took one of my subscribers' advice and did a back a black backdrop so it would take and focus a little better for you guys. But essentially we've created two slots. One that way one this way. We've raised barbs and we've kind of got a bit of a crown in the center. Like I said, that'll pretty much take care of itself whenever we take and lay in the wire and we start beating on it. It'll kind of mush down with the rest of it. But this is essentially the start of this method. So the next point, now I'm going to make this out, is I ended up making this too big. And this is where I'll show you this. See how small my wire is? There's no way that wire will fill that gap. It can fill the gap to the left of it. It can fill the gap to the right of it. But it can't fill the entire gap. I hope you guys can see that very well. So what does that mean? That means in order to fill the entire gap, we're going to have to use a bigger wire. So I'm going to show you what we need to do to be able to inlay this small wire. We're going to come over here and do it again. This time, instead of using a very large, using a butcher tool, we are just going to take and use this small chisel. We're going to come right across here. Hopefully I'm not getting my fingers in the way too much. Trying not to hit my camera at the same time because it's really zoomed in here. And that would really suck. So now I've created a line, just a slot, like a chisel line. And this is going to show you how easy this can be, guys. See that wire? Just about fits in there, don't it? So now all we have to do is come in with our butcher tool and push the walls up a little bit to give it a little more space, and then we can hammer it down and close it off. So that's what we'll do now. I'll do the other side later on with a much larger with a much larger wire just so this way I won't do that on camera but that way you guys can see how that one turns out as well. But now I don't know if you can see this I've raised a little bit of a pucker here. Raised a little bit of a pucker on that side. I'm using the leading edge of the butcher tool here. And remember, we're working with a small wire, so we don't have to take and get too carried away here. We're just trying to prick up that edge. Okay, so there we go. We got that edge pricked up. Now, we're going to lay our wire in. And all we're going to do is hammer that wire down in. And nice and flush. Now I just keep hammering it until it cleanishes it off nicely. 
try to get that to zoom in on that and get a little more accurate. There you guys, see it? So as you can see, we got it hammered nice and flush. It's all spread out in the hole. Really good to go. Now if you're doing this on a finished piece, you'd want to watch dinging up your surface material too much. But considering I'm not really, I'm just doing this on a scrap piece, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm going to cut off the excess and cut off the excess wire here and there we go that wire is inlaid and I say well Roy that's all well and fine but it doesn't look too good well we're going to improve the looks of this thing real quick like so I'm going to take a large file I'm going to clean it off nice and smooth. Clean out some of that joint there and take out the rest of that pucker on the surface. Round the edges off a little bit. That way we don't suffer from any tear out. I'll move to a finer file now. Hopefully y'all have enjoyed this video so far. I'm going to show you the result here. I've got one thing I want to show you guys to make this thing pop. I want you guys to take notice of it. And as I'm thinking about it, I'm not even going to do the other big part. This illustrates my point exactly. And you can see it doesn't look like it's very bright. It doesn't show a whole lot. It's very hard to see it. That's because we need to put some contrast in this. Two bright and surfaces working against each other don't look good. So I'll be back in just one second. All right, we're going to use a little technique I've learned to do on some other projects to get things to pop a little better. We are going to use some Birchwood Casey's Super Blue, Liquid Gun Blue. If you can't find this in your local area, I'll put a link down in the description box where you guys can find this online. Um, and it does make a world of difference. It's just a gun bluing, kind of a touch-up thing. I just want you to see what happens to it here when I put on the contrast. There you have it. Now you can see it quite a bit. Now you can obviously stop the bluing. You have to neutralize it and things like that. But you can see how quickly that lines out and really shows off that line we just let in. And so far on the counter, the counter says my video has only been going on for about nine minutes here. You know, less my talk time and things of that nature. So you can really see how quickly you can add an inlaid line to a piece for really low cost. Um, it, you know, it doesn't take very much time to you to take and do it, but it also, you know, it just makes the piece so much more interesting to the customer or to whatever you're doing, you know, whoever you're giving the piece to. It really makes a difference. So anyways, that's it for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Uh, I like the feedback either way. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, I've been a little behind on answering comments here. Lately I had a recent death in my family, so uh, I've been uh, not all there um, here recently. But uh, anyways, hope you guys are enjoying this video. Anyhow, thank you so much for all your support, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.